Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This video is going to be all of my skincare products that I own. Some of these I talk about a lot, they're in my regular rotation. Some of them are just things that I never really have a chance to talk about. But in general, I just wanted to show you what type of things I buy, what type of brands I like to buy from, and what types of products I like to use on my skin and on my body on a regular basis. I have it all laid out on my desk. I have it broken into certain categories, so I'm just going to get started. I don't know how I'm going to do this. There's a lot. Let's get started with something that I really never talk about, and that is masks. A lot of the masks I own are gifts that I just haven't gotten around to using yet. <laughs> I do have two here that are no longer in their packaging. They're from e.l.f. They're the under eye gel packs and I think that they each have one pair, one for under each eye in each one. And I think it's normally a three pack for like three or six dollars. These are fun if you're having, you know, a friend over and you are maybe you're having like a sleepover or something and you just want something fun to do together. I don't really feel like they're a necessity in my current lifestyle. I do keep most of my masks in my little skincare fridge that I have on my desk and I think that kind of adds to the luxury by having it like something cooling under your eyes. I don't really have a use for masks in general for my current type of skin unless they have some type of active ingredient like maybe a glycolic acid or something. I do have one mask in here that I like and I do feel like I see a difference in my skin, but all the other ones are kind of just for fun, including these ones. This one was a gift from my friend Hannah. Uh, this is from the Trader Joe's brand and this is a pumpkin spice biocellulose face mask and this is one of those masks that you pull out and it's a sheet and you put on your skin and this seems like it's gonna be really fun but I'm also kind of scared I'm just sure it's got a lot of fragrance in it right because it's pumpkin spice flavored and I just I don't know how that's gonna translate into skincare I know what it tastes like I know what it smells like but I'm not sure how that's gonna feel on my face uh, but I probably should use it she gave it to me quite a while ago and Trader Joe's is a cruelty-free brand, I'm pretty sure. And I think she said she only got this for like a dollar. There are a couple things from the Trader Joe's skincare line that I would like to try. If you have any recommendations, let me know. The other one is, again, a gift from my friend Hannah. And this is from the Dr. Jart brand. And it's the Rubber Mask Hydration Lover Hydrating Wrapping Rubber Mask. And I honestly don't even know how this works. It kind of looks like you put whatever is in this little packet here on your face and then you put the rubber mask over it and you leave it on for 40 minutes. I feel like that's going to make me feel really claustrophobic. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll have to test it out and talk about it in a future empties video. It seems really fun. I hope that's not what I look like. That looks really creepy and I don't want to look like that for 40 minutes, but we'll have to see. I'll let you know in a future MDs video. Now two masks that I do really like and I think are effective are the one from Andalou Naturals. This is the Pumpkin Honey Glycolic Masks. And then this is from the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay Cleansing Clay Mask. I got this from Amazon years ago and I think it's nice, I just don't ever remember to use it. This one I really love. I do love using glycolic acids. I think they're a really good chemical exfoliant that works really nicely with my skin and I do feel like my skin feels smoother, it has less texture, it looks, you know, just nicer. But I always forget to use this. I need to use it more, but it's really nice. I like it. And this one kind of has a pumpkin-y scent. So maybe this one from Trader Joe's won't be as scary as I'm imagining. And then this one, I think it goes by different names on the internet. And it's just like a clay powder that you mix with water and then you put it on your skin. It's natural calcium bentonite clay. And it's supposed to just pull out everything out of your pores. So it's kind of like a super, super cleansing one. You don't want to leave it on your skin for too long because I do think it would be very stripping, very drying, and I just don't use it that much. I need to use it more. Now let's talk about the other like acids and retinols and stuff that I have in my collection. I have the Pixi Glow Tonic. You guys know I love this. Really, really big fan of that. I only use it like once a week. And then I have these Elf Brighten Up Peel Pads. They are just little fabric pads that have a, I think it's a glycolic acid in it. And you just use that to be both a physical and a chemical exfoliant. 
These are kind of a dupe of the First Aid Beauty pads, which I much prefer. I think these ones are really small and flimsy and you need a couple to cover your entire face. While the First Aid Beauty ones, you only need one for your entire face and it doesn't fall apart so easily. So these ones are not as good and once I use them up, I won't buy them again. And then this one is something I forgot I even owned. This is from The Ordinary. It's the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. And this is just a retinol product and I'm always afraid to use retinol. Okay, this one's definitely expired. This is why I need to check in on myself more often and actually figure out what I have in my skincare routine because if not, things that I purchase will just go bad and I will not even know about it. So that's unfortunate. Now let's move on to the facial sprays. You guys know I love facial sprays. I did a video where I compared like 19 different face sprays and I have used most of them up at this point and I have a couple left over. This one here is the Yes to Cucumber Soothing Cooling Hydrating Mist. I don't like this. I think I will eventually just get rid of it. Um, it is one of those like aerosol can sprays and the scent is super strong. You'd think a cucumber would be more lightweight, but it's not. It's super, super strong. It makes my skin feel kind of sticky. And whenever I do spray it, it because of the way that the aerosol can works, I can just like hear it like crackling in my ears. Like I just feel like it gets everywhere in my hair, everywhere whenever I put it on. So I'll almost likely declutter this because I, I have not found a way to use it up that hasn't been gross. <laughs> same with the Body Shop Energizing Mandarin Face Mist. These are just so heavily scented. I have tried the other scents from this line. I think there's four total and they're just so heavily scented. I don't like them. I don't think they're that good. And I recently used up the coconut version. I had to dilute it with water a lot in order for it to even be usable. So this is not good. I wouldn't recommend the Body Shop ones. This one from e.l.f. is the Glowy Glow Dew Mist with coconut and argan oil. And I kind of hesitate to use this every day because I worry that maybe the coconut oil in it or something will be pore clogging. I haven't noticed any breakouts yet, but I haven't really used a lot of it. And I only just recently came back to use it again because I just finished, like I said, the Body Shop coconut one. Once again, I'll have to let you know, but it's not something I think I would repurchase. I have the Hylamide Hydra Density Mist. This is a multi-depth toning treatment for water density. I haven't used it that much just because I've been trying to use up some of the other ones. I, I think it kind of adds some moisture to your skin. I think it's more than just spraying water on your face. Hylamide, the Decium brand, I feel like they do put really good ingredients in their skincare. Everything is fragrance free and relatively affordable. I don't really know what's in here that would be toning. It seems like it just has like mostly rose water and a couple other ingredients that I don't really understand, but I think it's good. I think it's a good face spray. I think once I finish up this one, I will most likely purchase a giant of the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist or maybe I'll go back to the e.l.f. aloe mist or the e.l.f. coconut mist or I like the heritage store sprays a lot. There are a couple that I do really like so I think I'll probably just cycle through those but this is nice. I'm gonna really really quickly go through all of my SPFs. I do have a video that I just put out with how long does it take to use up sunscreens where I talk about a couple of these and I did just put up a haul video previously on this past Wednesday where I talked about a couple of these products as well. So I'm not going to go into super detail, but I do want to talk about what I have in my in my SPF arsenal. And the first product is the Beach Shield from Crave. This is an antioxidant day fluid. It's 50 mils, $20 full price. I really like this. I have talked about it before in great detail, especially in that SPF video and I do really enjoy it. If it were a little more affordable, I think I would purchase it more regularly and have it be like my staple SPF product. If I can catch it on sale, I will buy it again, but uh, there are other SPFs that I really like too that I can most likely find for more affordable prices. So it's not like I need this one. This isn't like my number one only because of the price point. <laughs> Another one here that I will most likely keep repurchasing is the Julep No Excuses Invisible Sunscreen Gel. This is SPF 40. You get an ounce. Typically, I think it's $28 full price, but I found this on the Costco website for half of that. So if I can continue to buy it at $14, then I will keep repurchasing it because I think it's fantastic. I love that it's a gel. It's super um, easy to spread out. It works really nicely under makeup. I can use it all year round. 
really enjoy the formula. It doesn't feel sticky or thick. I can wear it all over my neck and chest and it feels nice and lightweight and I still feel protected on a regular basis. I really like this. I do have a sunscreen spray here from Ulta. I will most likely get rid of this. I, it, number one, it's multiple years old, so I don't even think the SPF in here is good, but this is SPF 50 water resistant. It says it has a matte finish and it says it's a rose water setting spray, but there's no rose in here that I can detect. This is like spraying straight up alcohol all over your face. You have to be super careful not to get it anywhere near your eyes. You have to let it dry completely before you open your eyes or else you will get it in your eyeball and it's very uncomfortable. It smells really, really strong. I just, I don't love it. And also if you put on too much, it just feels gross. It just feels heavy. Like you, like you just sprayed a silicone primer on your face on top of your makeup. Don't think it's great. I do think it breaks down my makeup even faster throughout the day because of how heavy it is. I don't like it. So I will most likely actually get rid of this very soon. I do have the e.l.f. Beauty Shield. This is SPF 50 and it says it's a universal tint, but if you are someone who has a deeper skin tone or you're very warm, like you have a very warm undertone or a very yellow undertone, I don't think that this would look nice on you at all. This kind of has like a pinky undertone. I wouldn't say it makes me greasy throughout the day, but because of the weight of it, it does kind of help me look a little bit greasier by the end of the day. It does smell like sunscreen and it's not my favorite formula. I am in the process of using it up in a project pan. I know e.l.f. does have this on their website. They have a Beauty Shield SPF product on their website, but it's in different packaging, so I don't know if it's the same product. And from what I hear other people describe it as, it doesn't seem like it is the same. So I wouldn't purchase this one again, but it's fine enough for me to use until it's gone. I do have two Super Goop products in here. I talked about these in my most recent haul video, so I won't go into too much detail. The Defense Refresh SPF product I haven't been able to use yet because the sprayer is clogged so I need to put it into another container to try it out. And the Super Goop SPF 50 Everyday Lotion. This is nice. It does smell like sunscreen and it is one of those like heavier types of sunscreens but it's not super heavy and gross like a full-on mineral sunscreen can be. And I really like this for whenever I'm going to be outdoors or when I'm going to be like reapplying throughout the day and I'm not really worried about how it looks under makeup or how greasy I'll get throughout the day. It's just great for when you're going to be outdoors and it, maybe it's not the best under makeup. I think it would be fine under makeup. You would just have to pair it with like a really really lightweight moisturizer underneath. I have the Pure Rescue Squad SPF 25 DD Cream. This is just a clear white cream. I think if you apply too much, it can have a little bit of a white cast, so be on the lookout for that. I do like it, but I kind of wish it had a higher SPF and it is more expensive, so it's not one that I would buy again, but it is nice enough for me to use on a regular basis and it is moisturizing enough that I can either pair it with a really lightweight moisturizer or just wear it on its own. And this last one is one that I have not talked about in a long time. I remember featuring this in a favorites video, I think back in like 2018. And this is the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen Tinted Face SPF 50. And it's a mineral lotion, it's non-greasy, and it says it's antioxidant rich, water resistant for 80 minutes. This is three fluid ounces, I think for like $15. So it's a pretty great price. And this has 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide. This one is not open. This is a fresh one. Definitely not the same one that I was talking about in 2018. And this one has like a little bit of a tint to it. It's supposed to be like nude, but it really only would work for my type of skin. This does have kind of like a soft silicone-y feeling, not as silicone-y as the Unseen Sunscreen from Supergoop, but it definitely is one that can be kind of heavy if you put too much on. It is one that I enjoy using. Like I still stand by talking about it in my favorites video back in 2018, but since then I have tried a lot more different formulas and different types of sunscreens that I just prefer more. So once this one is used up, I probably won't buy it again and I'll just use my other, my newer favorites that I've discovered since finding this one. Okay, I have a couple body products. I have this Lush product. This is the Rose Argan Body Conditioner. This one smells like Rose and this was in a little gift pack that my friend Hannah gave me, I think as an engagement present. And this is a very thick body butter, a little bit thicker than I prefer in body creams. It smells very, very strong of Rose. It's, I actually do like it a lot. I'm not normally a fan of Rose, but I think in a body butter, I do really like it. And this specific type of scent from this rose line or whatever is really nice. It's great for after I shave my legs and my legs are like really dry and I just kind of put this on when my skin is a little bit wet from the shower still. It's not something I would probably put all over my body, 
uh, just because it is a bit heavy, but it is it is a really good body butter. Same with this almond oil. This is from Heritage Store. It's just their sweet almond oil. This is incredibly heavy. I think from now on, I will just mix a couple drops in with whatever lightweight body cream I'm using, just so I can get more use out of it. I tried to use it as a makeup remover. It's like too thick for that, and it's so hard to like get it off my skin and feel like my skin is actually clean after this. It's eight ounces, and if you can see, I have only used up the tiniest little bit. So if you have any recommendations on how to use sweet almond oil somehow in my skincare or body care routine, please let me know because I don't really know what to do with this. It's way heavier than I thought it would be. I have a body scrub here that I don't use on my body. This is from the J.R. Watkins brand and it is the, it's the Sugar and Shea Body Scrub and it is lemon cream fragranced and this smells so nice. It smells like a lemon pastry. I really, really like that a lot. Um, this does have a lot of really good granules in it, like it's a really good scrub, but whatever it's kind of sitting in is very thick and hard to rinse off. So I don't like to use this on my body. I use this as a hand scrub actually. So I keep this by my bathroom sink and every once in a while, especially during the winter when my hands are a little bit drier, I use this on my hands to exfoliate off the dead skin. And then because it does have a very thick moisturizing uh, whatever is left over. It feels really nice on my hands, but that's really the only way I would use it. I do have a cream here from Desert Essence. It's the Island Mango Enriching Hand and Body Lotion. I don't really like this. I think I will eventually get rid of this because I don't like using it. I don't like the scent. It's like very, very faint and it doesn't really smell that much like mangoes to me. I don't know. I don't think that it's that great. There are other products from Desert Essence that I really like. I like their uh, grape hair conditioner, and I have used a jojoba oil from this brand as well that I really liked. So there are other things from the brand that I like. I would not recommend trying their hand and body lotion though. I don't think it's that great. A lotion that I do think is that great is from Pacifica. It's their coconut cream body souffle. I really, really like this. It's lightweight, but it is moisturizing enough that I can put it on my skin. I can wake up the next day and still kind of smell like coconut, but it's not too overbearing. It's kind of like a more lightweight coconut scent. It's really nice, and I really enjoy this. I will definitely get another one once this is gone. The only two categories that I have left to talk about are face creams and oils and face washes. So let's talk about face creams first. I do have two oils here. They are both from The Ordinary. I have the rosehip seed oil. I have the virgin marula oil. And I really prefer the rose hip seed one. It's very moisturizing, but it's a little bit more lightweight than the marula oil. Uh, but sometimes the rose hip seed oil is not in stock, so I purchased the marula one. They're relatively interchangeable for me, but if I had to choose one, it would be the rose hip seed oil. And I just mix a couple drops in my hands, warm it up, and then press it onto my skin after I put on my face cream at night and I always wake up and my skin always looks really balanced and moisturized and I really like it, especially in the winter time. I have this eye serum from Hylamide, which is also under the Desium umbrella brand. And I purchased this because it was on sale last year during I think the month of November. Desium had a website wide, really good sale. So I picked this up because normally it's a little bit expensive for only 0.5 ounces. And I do really like it. It is a very lightweight, watery type of serum. So you do want to put some type of moisturizer or cream around your eyes. You don't wanna just use it on its own. It's not moisturizing enough for that. I do see somewhat of a difference when I use this under my eyes, but it's not like a life-changing product. I really only use this for special occasions when I wanna just do something a little bit extra to make my eyes look a little bit nicer. So, you know, special occasions, stuff like that. It isn't something I'd wanna use every day because I think I would go through it super fast. I only have two face creams and one of them is almost empty. It's the First Aid Beauty Ultra Pear Cream and this is the eight ounce bottle. The active ingredient is colloidal oatmeal. I do think this is really nice. I think First Aid Beauty recently started selling in China, so I don't think that they're technically cruelty free anymore. So I don't think I will repurchase this. I really only have a little bit left. I'm kind of right at the bottom here. I only have a couple more weeks left of use and then it'll be gone. And then from now on, I'll just continue to use my other face cream, which is the e.l.f. Hello Hydration Face Cream. And I usually get these in bulk whenever e.l.f. has their half off website sales because full price they're $12, but then you can get them half off for $6. I've talked about both of these creams in a how long does it take to use up face cream video. And these were both under the more affordable versions out of all the creams that I talked about. So I will definitely get this one again. Elf just came out with a fragrance-free version of this, so I'll most likely purchase that. And I do have one backup of that. And speaking of Elf backups, 
Let's move on to cleansers. The one cleanser that I just always have on me and I always buy a lot of is the e.l.f. Daily Face Cleanser. I have three of these in backup and I have a fresh one that I just put in my shower today actually it's five ounces of cleanser when you get it for half off it's like two dollars it's a really nice general cleanser i've never had any issues with it irritating my skin or feeling stripping it's just a nice second cleanse after i've removed my makeup at the end of the day james and i both use this which is why i bought so many backups because it is something that we go through like maybe once every two or three months a couple other cleansers here this is the ulta beauty skin soak foaming cleanser this is with hyaluronic acid and green tea extract it's four ounces i think full price it's twelve dollars and i do like having a foaming cleanser i think it's just nice to change it up i don't want to use the same cleanser every single day for the rest of my life even though that is pretty much what i do i think i use the elf one like six times a week and then i'll use this one every once in a while when i want to change it up um it is more expensive so i don't use it as often as the elf one but i do end up purchasing a new one once these are done. They take me forever to use up because like I said, I don't use them often, uh, but it's just nice to have it. Sometimes I just want to change it up and have a foaming cleanser instead of like a regular liquid cleanser. So it's good. One cleanser that I don't love, but I'm slowly working my way through is the NYX Whipped Cream Cleanser. It's from their Stripped Offline. I don't even know if they sell this anymore on their website. They came out with a whole like stripped off line after they came out with their stripped off micellar water, which you guys know I really enjoy. They also had other ones within the line that I never purchased because they actually were pretty expensive. They were like $15 to $18, which is out of my price range for skincare. This one I don't love. I do keep it by my bathroom sink. Whenever I wash my face at the sink, I just use this. But I typically don't. I usually wash my face in the shower because I shower at the end of the day. So I use an oil cleanser to remove my makeup and then I jump in the shower, rinse it off, and then use the e.l.f. cleanser to be my second cleanse. So I don't use this all the time. This is a white product that foams up and then whenever you rinse it off, it does make your skin kind of feel squeaky, which I'm not in love with. I haven't noticed any bad effects on my skin from using it, but I don't use it all the time, so that might be why. But I do think it, if it is something I use every day, it could be pretty stripping. I won't purchase it again, but it's fine to use up. One that I do really like is this Pacifica Kale Detox Deep Cleaning Face Wash. This one is probably a little bit more stripping than the e.l.f. one. So once again, I wouldn't use it every day, but I actually just use it whenever I travel. And they do sell these travel sizes on the Ulta website. So once I finish this one up, I'll buy another one and keep it as my travel cleanser. And the last product I want to talk about is an oil cleanser from Dermalogica. This is 5.1 ounces and full price it's $45. I talked about this in my most recent haul video that went up on Wednesday and I said that I'm already two thirds of the way down and I've used it like 30 something times. So I might just barely get 50 uses out of it before it's done. I just don't think that's a very good value. I'm sure there are other oil cleansers out there that are much more affordable per use. So even though this was a good oil cleanser, I don't think I would buy it again. It's just too expensive. And also it kind of has like a bitter orange scent to it, which I'm not a fan of, but it is a good oil cleanser. It rinses off clean. It does get rid of all my eye makeup and stuff. So it's good performing. I just don't like the price point. So that is everything in my skincare collection. I do have a skincare collection from years ago. I think it was back in 2018 again, or maybe even 2017. So I think it'll be interesting for me to go back and look at what I had in that video versus today. Do I still use the same type of products? Do I use the same types of brands? And I'm sure there are even a couple products in here that are the same product from several years ago. So I should probably go through and make sure I don't have anything that's expired. Let me know if you know of any cruelty-free, affordable skincare brands that you think I should try. Should I get out of my e.l.f. and ordinary bubble that I seem to be staying in? Let me know if you have any suggestions or if you have any specific thoughts on any of the products I've talked about today. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.